But now what we'll try to achieve here is, so in the last video when we have seen that you are sorting the elements, it is sorting from the first digit itself, right? Because if you run this code, the output you are getting is 2, then I mean 265, then 404, then 637, and then I mean 629, and then 908, right? You are getting that is because you are so, you're sorting the elements from the first digit itself. What I want is, I want to sort this element based on the last digit. That means we have to change the way sort works. But hold on, how exactly sort works? So to understand how sort works, let's go to the integer class. Because when you say collections.sort and when you are passing the values here, your sort don't know on based on what logic you want to sort it, right? So you can see it says uh, sorts the specified list of values natural ordering and okay so it, it 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 uses something called as compatible interface to do that let me just explain that here so if you open this integer class integer class implements compatible interface which means when you say you want to sort the integers this compatible interface will define the logic for it and where the logic is defined so if you go to compatible interface we have a method called as compatible so this method is responsible i mean integer class has implemented it it so if you go to the definition let me just go for the definition here and it's here so compare to is using this method in which okay so you can see there's a logic here so it is simply going for this logic by default when you say you're comparing integers this is the logic they have implemented but I don't I don't want to use this logic I want to have my own logic you can override the existing logic for the sort, which is defined by integer class, by using a comma here. So in the sort method, you can provide the first, I mean the list of objects and then a comma. And afterwards, you can specify the logic. But I mean, how can you specify the logic? So if you say control space, uh, not here, but if you say sort, sort takes two values. Can you see that second one? It takes the collection. I mean, it takes the list of values. It also takes the object of comparator. Comparator is something bit difficult to understand. And that's okay, even if you don't get in, in the first view, you can watch this video once again to get the complete gist of it. So when you say enter, we have to first pass the values and then we have to pass the object of comparator. So comparator object will have the logic for the sorting. So let's create the object of comparator. So we'll say comparator and we'll say this, we'll name it as C. But this comparator object will work with integers. So we'll say comparator will work with integers. We need to also import the package. Let's import that. Now if I jump to comparator, oh, hold on. Comparator is an interface. Oh, that's the problem now. Because we cannot create object of interface, right? So how can you create object of H? So there are multiple ways you can do that. One, you can search for the class which implements comparator. Because if you get that class, you can simply create the object of a class and you will, you're done with it. But unfortunately, in Collection API, we don't have class which implements comparator. So we have to create our own class. So what you can do, you can go here, you can say uh, class my comparator and that class will implement comparator. Then you can, you can, you have to also implement the method which is you know, in Java 8, they have added lots of methods in comparator. Earlier, it was, it, we were having only one or two methods, only one method. You can see all these methods are introduced in Java 1.8. So we have a method which is compare, which takes two values. So that means you have to get a class which implements the interface, and then you have to define that method. That's one way. The another way is you can create the anonymous class, as we have seen. So if you have the interface, we can create anonymous class. We can say new comparator, and we can specify again integer and we can give a round packets and we can provide the implementation here itself again if you don't remember this go back to the anonymous class video and now what we can do is we can simply implement the method which is public int compare and we can pass those two values which are coming here so those two values are integer i comma integer now as we have seen in generics how exactly it works is if you see when you when you define the when you define the comparator here, it takes a type, right? Which is t, and the same t is replaced here. And we are passing integer, so it will replace this t by integer. And now we can implement the logic here. And what is exactly exactly logic is? We'll say if i is greater than, uh, not not i. I, I just want to go for the last element, right? 
So we can say i percentage 100, which will give you the last value, right? Uh, so i percentage 100 is greater than j percentage 100, return 1, else return minus 1. So this is the logic we have to implement, and it's that simple. And if you run this code, you can see we got all the elements inserted, not exactly. Something went wrong. Okay, the, so the logic is not getting implemented properly. Hey, yeah, it should be mod 10, right? Yeah, so my logic was right, it should be 1 and minus 1. So when you say you want the last element, it should be mod 10, right? I don't know what came to my mind for 100. So it, we got 4, 5, 8 and 9, right? So we are, we are providing our own logic. So we can do that with the help of compiler interface. We just have to create the object of it and pass the object in sort method and everything will be done. Okay, so that's how you implement, that's how you use compiler to specify your own logic for the sorting. We can also do this for string, you can also do this for uh, your own objects, right? Now there's one more thing you have to remember. Now let's say when you have, uh, when you have this class, when you have this uh, if else here, what we can also do is instead of using if else, we can use ternary operator. We can say i mod 10 is greater than j mod 10. And if this is true, return 1, else return minus 1. Even, even this will work, provided I have put, have uh, set the elements in a proper format. So you can see even this is working. So this, you can also write uh, ternary operator instead of using if else. Now, if you remember the lambda expression, so when you, whenever you have an interface, oh, before that we have one more thing. You know, there, there might be some question from your side, why one, why minus one? It's because the sort will sort the elements. It is only asking you for the permission to swap the elements or not. If you, if you learn any, any sorting technique, the one common thing in that is swapping the elements. So when, when, whenever you sort the elements, swapping is important, right? So when to swap and when not to swap, that is important. So sorting is totally based on when to sort and when not to sort. So when you say this, when you specify the logic, when you say one, it means swap the element. When you say minus one, don't swap the elements. So come back to comparator. Now, if you focus comparator, it's a functional interface. And whenever you see functional interface, something comes to your mind. And that is lambda expression, right? So using lambda expression, we don't need these lines of code. We can remove that directly. We can also remove this round uh, curly brackets. We can put a uh, arrow there, and so it, it still works, right? So if you run this code, it still works. In lambda expression, you don't have to specify the type of the element. Even that is optional. We can remove that. Uh, in fact, return statement is is optional. We can remove that. No curly brackets required, and you can see everything we can write in one line, and that's the effectiveness about Java 8, right? So you can do everything in one line. In fact, the awesomeness is you can also replace this C by the actual code. You can just copy this code. And if you are getting overwhelmed this with this logic, just watch this video with a slow speed. <laughs> okay, so if you run this code, you got the values here. So we can, instead of creating the object of compat and all the stuff, we can write this line here, this thing. So yeah, that's how that's how you work with uh, collections class and the compator object or compator interface. So in this video, we have talked about compator. In the next video, we'll talk about compatible interface.